Toyota has a lot of old trucks in their lineup. Between the 4Runner, Tundra, and Land Cruiser, the company has gotten almost as bad as Nissan by letting their core truck models become over a decade old. Now, annoyingly, there is one model that feels more old than the rest, and that's this dinosaur right beside me. This is the 2020 Sequoia TRD Pro, upgraded like all the other TRD Pro models with Fox racing shocks, unique wheels and tires, additional skid plates, and of course, this unique army green metallic exterior color. Now, the bones of the Sequoia have not been fully redesigned since 2000. 2008. So as you guys can see, 12 years old is getting up there in car years. Between new competition from the Chevrolet Tahoe and Ford Expedition, the new Sequoia is definitely becoming harder and harder to sell. But if you guys are looking for a full-size SUV and you want something with a reputation for reliability and durability, how does this 2020 Sequoia TRD Pro model stack up? That's what we're here to find out. So I've got to hand it to Toyota. Even though this thing is 12 years old, it actually still sells relatively well with the company moving around 10 to 12,000 Sequoias every year. So there's still a good amount of people that still want to buy one of these things. And as you guys know, SUVs are hot sellers here in America. So the Sequoia is one of the most spacious and most off-road capable ones you can still buy today despite its age. Now, as you can see as well, the TRD Pro model gets some unique styling updates. Now, Toyota gave this thing a pretty significant refresh about two years ago for 2018. They made full LED headlights as standard with an LED daytime running light, LED turn signal, and these Rigid Industries LED fog lights, which look make the front end look a little bit nicer. The TRD Pro model also includes this unique grille that has Toyota spelled out across the side. And for 2020, they made Toyota Safety Sense P standard. So that means right there lives the radar sensor for the adaptive cruise control. You also have forward collision uh, braking. You also have blind spot monitoring with your cross traffic alert and their lane uh, departure control system. Although it does not include the lane keeping assist because this is such an old platform. Now in this army green metallic color, it certainly makes the Sequoia look a lot more more rugged, a lot more off-road capable. However, you guys might be surprised to hear that the TRD Pro model doesn't actually include a suspension lift. The Fox shocks only just increase the travel of the front suspension by about three quarters of an inch, but the Sequoia still has roughly 10 inches of ground clearance, which is actually on the higher end. If you guys go for the fully loaded Platinum models, Toyota also includes an air suspension with an auto leveling rear suspension. The Sequoia is still one of the bigger SUVs in the segment. When this thing came out about a decade ago, it's stretched at 122 inches long for the wheelbase and at 205 inches long, this is still one of the big ones you can buy, although it is now five inches shorter than a Lincoln Navigator or Ford Expedition or the new Chevrolet Tahoe. Now, as you can see, the Pro model also includes these unique set of five spoke 18 inch wheels. These are actually the same BBS Forge wheels that you find on the Land Cruiser Heritage Edition. They're just painted black. And it also includes these Michelin all-terrain tires. These are 32 inch tall all-terrain tires. It gives the Sequoia a nice rugged look. This is one that I would wouldn't hesitate to take off-road, although its massive size does make it a little bit more challenging getting through those smaller, you know, off-road obstacles. You can see also the Pro model includes this um, stainless or this metal roof rail at the top. You also get the uh, rocker guards at the sides or the side step rails, which are again beefed up for off-road usage. And at the rear, this is where I laugh at these Sequoias every time I see them because look at this rear end design. Toyota hasn't changed a damn thing about it over the last decade for this thing. You still have these incandescent tail lights and all incandescent design and it just looks like it's from 2005 not even 2008. The one cool thing about the Sequoia is that you still have this fold down or this slide down rear window which is definitely a feature that a lot of owners love. Toyota also offers it on the 4Runner and the Tundra which is again a great selling feature and they did add a power lift gate finally although as you can see it doesn't always want to open when I actually do open it and if you guys want to close it there's a button over there you can push I'm not sure why this thing is not closing. Maybe if I have the key fob. It's so old I have to actually push and hold it and it's really slow when it starts to close. <laughs> and it's very finicky. It doesn't always want to work, but when it does work, it's one of the slowest closing lift gates and it also doesn't open high enough. But Looking at the cargo area, you can, you can see here, a third row is standard on every Sequoia. And with the seats up back here, you get around 19 cubic feet of space, which is okay amount of space. If you wanna fold down the third row here, which Toyota actually makes it pretty easy. There's a button here, there's two buttons. This will fold down the third row. 
With the third row seat folded, this thing does offer a pretty good amount of space. You're looking at around 42 cubic feet of space. Remember, this is one of the first SUVs, again, that introduced an independent rear suspension back in 2008, although Ford was really the first. If you fold down the second row captain's chairs, Toyota says you get around 120 cubic feet of space. That is very impressive numbers, even though this thing is getting pretty old. And so we move on to the interior of the 2020 Toyota Sequoia. Obviously the exterior, very little changes. And on the inside, Toyota also pretty much kept it the same, but there is one big improvement they added this year, and that's when we look at the infotainment system. But as you can see, when we're not talking about the infotainment system, this interior is legitimately a throwback to the mid 2000 eras. The steering wheel has been updated slightly over the years. The dashboard, this is the same dashboard that they introduced on the Tundra back in 07, while the Whereas the Tundra got a new dash design, the Sequoia soldiers on with the older unit. Now, shutting on the door, you can hear the door has a relatively solid sounding thunk still, which is nice considering the age of this vehicle. And they finally added push button start with intelligent access key. So here's the key fob for the Sequoia. This feature has been absent for this vehicle for quite some time. And the button to start up the engine was back here, as you can see, and there's a teeny tiny helper screen there in the center, but those gauges are basically, again, a throwback to the mid 2000 eras. Everything in here is just super old. And if you start looking at the rest of this interior, it's not very luxurious in here either, like some of its competitors can be. You have a hard touch dashboard material, as you can see everywhere. Um, the door panel here is also a hard touch plastic material. It's very cheap feeling, so that's pretty disappointing considering the price of this car. Um, the rest of the door panel here, you can see it's slightly padded, although this could be leather stitched right there. The windows, they're automatic up and down for the driver and front passenger. The rear is just uh, power, not completely one touch, like in some of the uh, competitors. The steering wheel, as you can see here, is a tilt and telescoping with a manual adjustment. Some competitors offer a power tilt telescoping steering wheel, uh, which I wasn't expecting in this, in this car, for example. Uh, the dash design, you can see this screen here Finally gets Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is nice. However, the screen itself is only seven inches, which is almost an inch bigger versus the pre-refreshed or the previous, you know, infotainment system. But this screen, you know, it's nice that they finally added Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is great, but come on, Toyota. Like, this screen is so tiny considering how massively expansive this dashboard is. I mean, you could have gotten rid of all this right here and made the screen like an eight or nine inch display, which would have been nice. I imagine Toyota is gonna be working on a completely new system for the next generation, but this, as you can see here, is great to have, but I mean, I just don't know if it's worth it spending this much money for a new Sequoia just to get this when there are plenty of aftermarket head units available that are gonna be significantly less expensive versus having to get a brand new Sequoia. You can see there's three zone automatic climate control. You have the knob here for your four wheel drive system. It's got four high, four low, a two wheel drive mode. There's a center locking diff, a tow haul mode. You have three USB C or USB charging ports right there, one there for your phone. You have uh, heated seats, which it's got this old school dial. The Pro model doesn't offer cooled seats like you can get on the Platinum version. When you put the vehicle into reverse, you can see there's the backup camera. It doesn't even have trajectory. No 360 camera is offered on a vehicle this big. It's kind of annoying that they don't offer that, which would have been nice. Going back to the Toyota head unit here, you can see there is embedded GPS, which is great, but I mean, this GPS system is very old and it just looks terrible. It's so small and it's really laggy and slow at times. So um, Toyota obviously has a better system that they've got in their newer cars uh, and a much larger screen. So this is all pretty disappointing. At least the Sequoia is very roomy in here. You can see plenty of room to stretch out. The seats, they look like they're from a mid 2000s Toyota. They're still surprisingly comfortable. I like the red stitching and the TRD Pro badge, but this is just very old. This is also padded. Uh, it doesn't really feel like leather though. This feels like a leatherette. You can see big, massive center console, which is great, um, which is what you expect kind of in this segment of vehicle. You have three cup holders right here, which is nice. Uh, you have this little storage area right here, which is hidden under this cheap feeling, you know, lid that comes out as well, which is kind of a pain to put back on too. So that just pretty much needs work. The Sequoia offers two glove boxes. You can see here, small on the bottom, you know, relatively small on the out, on the top as well. Uh, and then above me, you can see just a standard sunroof. The Sequoia does not offer a panoramic sunroof. So overall, the cabin is probably the biggest letdown. The exterior looks old, but this looks even older aside from the new Apple CarPlay, which is great. Uh, I strongly recommend looking at the competition if you guys are looking for a much more modern interior. So one of the reasons why the Sequoia still continues to sell well is because Toyota offers a crap ton of interior space 
in this thing despite its age. When you get back here into the second row, the company says you have around 40 inches of legroom back here. 40 inches is a significant amount. It's practically on par with a lot of the newer competition. This actually had more space than the previous generation Tahoe, at least until Chevy finally redesigned it and gave it an independent rear suspension. As you can see here, there's a nice big pass through right here. You have an armrest here that is slightly adjustable and um, in terms of legroom and space, you can see the sunroof does take up some headroom here, but overall I can get pretty comfortable in these seats. You have rear seat climate controls. Surprisingly, no rear air vents down here. It's actually on the roof, which looks like it came off of a 2001 Toyota Sienna minivan. It's just a very old part that I've seen uh, on older Toyotas. If you fold this down, you can see cup holders that pop down, which feel a little bit flimsy and cheap, but no USB uh, charging ports back here. Again, it's going to show you the age of this vehicle. Thankfully, this second row seat allows you to slide forward and back, which is nice because it's gonna give you more space into the third row. Now, let me get back into the third row. Let me fold this forward here. There's a little lever here that you can pull and that actually just folds the seat down. If you wanna actually fold the seat out of the way, there's another lever over here that you pull and that slides the seat forward out of the way. Now getting back here, you can see, I'm gonna scooch over to this side. Because of that independent rear suspension, I actually have a surprisingly good amount of space back here at five foot seven. I'm actually comfortable back here, which is nice. You typically don't find this, you know, in this segment, although a lot of competitors are getting a lot better. Because the Sequoia is so wide, you can fit three people across back here. And in terms of features, there are some rear seat vents, but don't even think to look for a USB-C charging port or USB port, or even a power outlet back there. Now underneath the hood of this dinosaur, you're gonna find an engine that we've seen since the Sequoia launched about 12 years ago. This is the company's tried and true 5.7 liter V8. You guys know this engine very well. It's going to be bulletproof reliable because it doesn't even have direct injection. It's a double overhead cam V8 with their variable valve timing assist. It still makes 381 horsepower and 401 pound feet of torque. It still goes out through either rear or four wheel drive with a low range transfer case through a six speed automatic transmission, a six speed auto. These numbers were great a decade ago, but today they are definitely starting to fall behind. Now fuel economy is one of the weakest links of this new Sequoia. It's ready to get 14 in the city, 17 on the highway, Ouch, that is thirsty even by big truck standards. And this thing properly equipped will total a maximum of around 7,100 pounds. That is again, 1,000 to 2,000 pounds less versus the competition. And she's also a heavy SUV because it's such an old platform. As this one sits, it weighs a tick under 6,000 pounds. So by now you guys have probably noticed that I think the Sequoia is very, very old. Now, just because a vehicle is old does not mean that it's bad to drive. And getting behind the wheel of the 2020 Sequoia TRD Pro, this is very much a throwback. I mean, I drove one last year when I filmed a Platinum model, the TRD Pro, practically drives the same. Yes, it got updated Fox suspension uh, or shocks, which have um, much better damping and a little bit more travel. So I noticed the ride quality is slightly softer in this vehicle. And in a vehicle that's already got a very cushy, soft ride quality, this is a very, very cushy ride. So people who are looking for a comfortable, soft ride, you're gonna be liking the way this drives. The steering is also, ooh, it's very light and numb and very slow ratio. So very truck-like. The Sequoia very much drives like an old, like the old truck that it is. And that is not a bad thing if you guys, you know, are looking for that. The visibility in here is also pretty good. You can see out of it very well. Um, Toyota finally added their Toyota Safety Sense P, you know, driver assistance tech. So I've got blind spot monitoring. I've got lane departure alert. I've got uh, adaptive cruise control. Although I don't believe it comes down to a full stop. You have automatic emergency braking, which is great. But um, the lane departure alert, all it does is it just beeps as I cross the lane markers. It doesn't actually keep you in the lane. It doesn't even shove you back into the lane. So it's very rudimentary in its design because this is just you know an old platform that Toyota has been slowly adding their driver assistance tech to. The quietness of the cabin is also pretty good, although I do hear a fair amount of wind noise coming in at you know, not very high speeds. I, I also noticed that Toyota did add the three blink for the turn signal. So if I just tap the turn signal left or right, it'll do a three blink, which the old Sequoia didn't have. So Bravo Toyota, you finally added that piece of tech that was missing from this car. You still can't get that in something like a Toyota 86 or a Toyota 4Runner, if you can believe it. The powertrain is also completely unchanged. This is the tried and true 5.7 liter V8, which does have a fairly good amount of low end torque. 
but you do still have to rev the engine out to actually feel it accelerate any um, pretty well. It also uh, ha is a naturally aspirated engine, so you know the fuel economy isn't super great. The six-speed auto is a little slow to shift, a little lazy to shift. Um, and it moves out the Sequoia just fine. I'd say zero to 60 for this thing is right around the seven second marker. Perfectly adequate acceleration. So this thing definitely doesn't feel like it's wanting for power. You're just going to be annoyed with it every time you have to go to the gas pump because she's a thirsty, thirsty truck. And in my week's worth of testing, I've only been averaging around 13 MPG, which is horrible considering, you know, even the competition has gotten slightly better gas mileage. I think I had the new Tahoe and that was getting 15 or 16 MPG and I wasn't even trying to get good gas mileage in that thing either. So this is definitely a truck that is going to be something that I know for those of you who plan to keep keep this thing for 10 plus years, you're gonna want this truck, but you are making a huge compromise and it's not even that less expensive than the competitors. So my recommendation is think hard. Think hard, is Toyota's reputation for reliability really that, you know, a huge deciding factor? You know, because you are really buying an old truck that while it does have some newer tech in it, will constantly remind you that you spent this much money for something that takes you back to 2008. So although some of you may disagree with my rather harsh review on the Sequoia because of how old it is, I'm only harsh like this because for a big company like Toyota, to let a vehicle as important as this become over a decade old just sounds inexcusable to me. Sure, we all know the Sequoia is going to be reliable. You know it's built well. You know this thing will go easily 300,000 miles with very little problems. That's all fantastic. However, Toyota could easily invest some money and redesign this thing at least five years ago. Now, obviously they are working on a new version. We're going to expect to see a new Tundra come out first with the Sequoia of course following up later and I have a lot of expectations for the new version I wanted they're they're actually saying it's supposed to be hybridized it's supposed to have like a twin turbo v6 under the hood it's supposed to get significantly better fuel economy a much nicer more modern cabin a better ride quality a better more sleeker look but until then this is still the model that we have and there's not even a new version for 2021 there's like a nightshade edition which has blacked out trim for 2021 but this is still again very much the same car that came out around 12 nearly 13 years ago and that makes this thing a problem for me for purchasing it new especially when you look at the price of the sequoia this car starts at $51,000 for the base model for rear wheel drive. Now that is actually less expensive than the Ford Expedition, the um, Chevrolet Tahoe, and of course the GMC Yukon. But this one here, the TRD Pro, there are no additional extras to add stickers for around $65,000 with destination. And if you keep in mind, if you guys go for a fully loaded platinum, those can easily top $70,000, which is not that much less expensive than a fully loaded version of the Ford Expedition or the Chevy Tahoe, which again, are much newer vehicles. They get much better gas mileage. So really for me, if you guys are looking to buy a Sequoia, my recommendation, go for a used one, something that's five years old because you're essentially getting the same car, even though they added CarPlay for 2020. On that tiny screen, it just doesn't make sense. It makes sense for me to buy this thing new, considering how expensive a new version actually is. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2020 Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.